USB has been around for over 28 years. USB cables are used primarily for data transfer and also charging your 82 million gizmos. But in our glorious wireless modern age, most people simply use USB cables for charging stuff. But what if I told you that you might actually be using the wrong cable and even the wrong charger to keep your smartphone and your tablet and so on charged? Welcome to the wonderful world of USB cable madness. Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. USB launched way the heck back in 1996 with USB revision 1.0. Since then, there have been many revisions, including, but not limited to, <laughs> USB 1.1, 2.0, 2.0 revised, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, and now, not USB space 4.0, but just USB 4. No space, no dot O. Get that right, otherwise everyone will jump on your back. It's USB 4, and now there's USB 4 space 2.0. Are you confused yet? Because you should be. Some of these USB flavors used different connectors and even different versions of the same connector. Now, note here the data speed in the row marked signaling rate. The early versions of USB were very slow, 1.5, 12 megabits per second. The most popular for a very long time flavor of USB, USB 2.0, was up to 480 megabits per second. Nowadays, though, we get up to 10, 20, 40, and even 80 gigabits per second with the latest and greatest USB 4 standards. Note also that these super fast data rates in this column are supported by the USB Type C connector. That's the sort of rounded, reversible connector, which they should have done in the first place because you don't have to get the thing plugged in right. But whatever. Now, the cool thing about USB is that each version is backwards compatible. So what a lot of people do is they have a cable like this with the big standard type A connector and a micro on the other end, or they have a type A connector and a type C on the other end. And they go, ah, that way it's, I can just plug it into my charger. I can plug it into my lappy. I'm off and running. But is that the best thing to do? For maximum data transfer, what you want is a type C to type C cable. The latest USB 4 standard gives you 80 gigabit per second data transfer rates, which is 10 gigabytes per second. But most likely the Type-C stuff you have is actually USB 3.2, which is usually 20 gigabits per second, which still, that's 2.5 gigabytes per second. That is plenty fast for anything you need to do, including an external SSD or solid state disk drive. The other cool thing about Type-C USB ports and cables is that if you go type C all the way through, not only do you get super fast data transfer rates, but this one type C to type C cable supports not just USB and not just charging, but also a PCI Express bus, uh, display port video connections, so you could use a type C to connect certain monitors to your computer. It's bonkers. And they also support Thunderbolt, which is a standard that was used more on Apple computers, and now it's kind of become integrated into USB 3 and 4. It's, it's complicated. But the point is, this one cable has become much more than just USB. It's, it can be used for everything. So the fact is that newer USB-C ports and cables give you the most flexibility and the most speed, and as it turns out, the highest charging rates. Interestingly, Power delivery over USB, which is usually called USB PD for power delivery, is kind of loosely correlated with the specific version of USB that's used in your gizmo and your cable. That's why sometimes you have a smartphone or a tablet and it uses, instead of PD, it uses quick charge or fast charge. And many of these charging schemes are even proprietary, so you need a special charger and blah blah blah. But increasingly, the, the charging schemes are being sort of unified and you should be safe buying one universal charger for all your gizmos. For USB 3.2, the maximum charging rate you can get with a USB Type-C to Type-C cable is up to 100 watts. USB 4 Revision 2 increases that to 240 watts. Will Revision 3 see 77 kilowatts and you'll be able to use a USB Type-C cable to charge your electric car? Maybe. 
You have to understand here that your average laptop has a 65 watt power brick, unless you have a gaming laptop and then it might be 90 or 120 watts. But 240 watts is a lot of power. But the fact is that when it comes to charging with a USB cable, it really depends on what the USB port on your gizmo supports and what the USB ports on your charger support. And then after that, it depends on the cable. Chances are the cable you have is going to work just fine. It's more the port on the gizmo and the port on your charger or even your specific charger that's going to make the biggest difference. So in short, if your gizmo uses a Type-C port, you want to use a Type-C to Type-C cable. Now you might think, well, but I bought a smartphone and it came with a charger and it supports some kind of fast charging as I understand it, so I should just use the charger that came with the phone, right? No, not necessarily. Some manufacturers are selling smartphones and tablets without a charger, so you have to bring your own. Many are actually still including a charger, but it doesn't support the latest and greatest fast charging standards that are implemented in the device. So basically, they're kind of giving you a crap charger, and of course you have to pay the company extra to get a fancier one if you want to charge at the maximum charging rate. Which of course you do, because wireless charging methods are still not quite up to par, so you're better off having a good old-fashioned USB cable to charge at the fastest. So what you want to do, first of all, is get yourself a universal charger. Usually these have multiple Type-C ports and a Type-A port on it. Note that for most people you're going to want a 65 watt charger. Now usually how this works is you can only get the maximum 65 watt charging rate out of one Type-C port at a time. So if you need to charge two Type-C gizmos, you might get, say, uh, 45 watts out of one and 20 watts out of the other, but the total charging power is never going to exceed the 65 watts. So if you have many, many gizmos to charge at the same time, I would recommend getting a larger and more expensive 100 watt universal USB charger. Uh, I'll put links down in the description to my personal recommendations. And then we come to cables. So obviously you're going to want a Type-C to Type-C cable because that's going to give you the fastest charging rate from your universal charger. And of course, the other end goes into your gizmo. They'll be able to talk to each other and negotiate a higher voltage and therefore a higher charging rate. You're also going to want for your older devices a type A to micro B cable, most likely, because that sort of little trapezoidal connector that's used on things like older Kindles and older smartphones and tablets. For that, you connect to the type A port on your universal charger. And finally, you might also want to invest in a type A to type C connector. But hang on a minute, Scotty, didn't you just say it's better to use the type C to type C? Yes, but not always. For example, I have an 11th generation Kindle Paperwhite, and it has a type C connector on it. When I use my fancy charger with a type C to type C cable to charge my Kindle, it only goes up to about 80%, and then it just stops charging. However, if I use the type A to type C cable, it will charge all the way to 100%. And basically what's happening there is this fancy charger on its type C port is trying to do super duper fast charging. And because Kindles and other gizmos like them have such small low power batteries and they charge very, very slowly, when that type C port detects the end of the Kindle charging cycle and the current is very, very small, it tends to just kind of shut the port off and stop charging. So that's what you want a type A to type C cable for in case you have some gizmos that do not charge to 100%. So basically you get one charger, you get three cables, and you're all set to charge all your devices, uh, up to three of them at the same time, possibly more if you buy the 100 watt charger. So there you have it. That is USB cable madness. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.